There's a well-known saying that all comedians know, that being, comedy is subjective. Although the sentiment is correct, there's a little bit more to the statement that many people ignore. Humor is very subjective, because what makes someone laugh can change depending on the person. But the structure of a joke, how it's told and when it's told, are all very objective. It's a good comedian's job to figure out the best way to present a joke to an audience to get the full use out of it. And if your jokes aren't funny, it's not their problem, it's yours. Anyway, let's talk about drawing. There are tons of small communities that have made a corner for themselves on the internet. For example, I've aligned myself pretty closely to the Lauren Armstrong community, or the Church of Cod, or the TCAP verse, whatever you want to call it. That's where our story starts, as a creator by the name of Joran Comedy would graze this community all the way back in 2020. Joran, real name Stefan, was a man in his late 40s who was known best for his two passions in life, music and comedy. For music, Joran would keep his guitar at arm's length, as this was the main and only instrument he would use. He would go out to open mic nights and play both covers of songs and his own original music. As for comedy, Jordan would consider himself a comedian, creating and performing in many skits in his lifetime and even joining a comedy troupe known as Funny Please. The skits he created were not too great. I'm being overcome with the spirit. <gasps> like really not good at all. Stop right there, for there's something you should know. I, Todd Harris, you're welcome, am nine-fifths the man you are. Nine-fifths, wouldn't that be one and four fifths? Fraction to section! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him! Ah. But I support anyone who tries to improve at their craft until they become pros. Jordan would take his two passions, comedy and music, and start making content revolving around Lauren Armstrong after his riveting discovery of this community. I'll give a very, very abridged um, story about how I came into the church and what happened was, <clears throat> so it's going from one channel to another. Frederick Newton, he got me into Chris Chan. Chris Chan got me into Bay Shaman. I like to call Bay Shaman the gateway drug. Because everybody finds out about Lauren through Bay Shaman. But um, I discovered Bay Shaman. I started, I was in his channel and then not as much in. I found out about Lauren. And then I was later on came back to Bay Shaman. I was so interested. I was like, I wonder if this guy's ever done any interviews. I found an interview on a channel called I Wreck Everything. From there, I discovered Mr. Andy Burkett. So we're drawing a straight line here. I have been a fan, a subscriber of Andy. I've done work for Andy. I wrote the Teaching Your Children About the Church of Cod for Andy, and I've been on his live stream. So I just dropped this bomb <laughs> in Adam's lap. Adam was part of that. And I think, I'm not sure, but I think from finding Andy... No, I don't think that's when I found Clobber, but that was part of me liking Clobber because uh, they did an interview with him, I believe, and then I learned about Betty, and one thing left led to another. One day I went to Clobber, I said, I'm getting all these crazy ideas for content, but I'm nervous. Can't, do you think I should start making contact? He's like, absolutely. People are starving for content. If you're gonna do stuff that's more that we see less of, like songs, sketches, people will love it. Once hooked, Jordan would make parody songs about Lauren. Create skits about Lauren. I'm innocent. He would create skits about the community that talks about Lauren. Clobbering time here. All right, my good buddy, Mr. Clobbering time is here. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Clobber, 
I understand that you want to keep your anonymity online. That's cool, man. That's cool. But you're here in person. Take that fucking paper bag off your head. Once he became a bit more well known, he would involve other community members in his skits. It was our secretary, Miss Regina. Our new colleague has arrived at last, Morn. Excuse me? I, I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. Just a little something I do when I get very excited. I can't believe we finally got another scientist to our group. Come in. Hi there. How y'all doing? Do I have the pleasure of addressing Dr. Armstrong? You do indeed. And what's your name, Quine, sir? Christopher Western Chandler, but all my friends call me Chris Chan. At your service. He would do extra commentary on his skits. Princess. He scared the princess into giving him all the riches of the kingdom. Oh no! So obviously we're going into the real life events. And when I decided, of course, that uh, the number one villain would be obviously Lauren Armstrong, I'm like, okay, what is a good fairy tale character that I can put him in there? Obviously, he's ugly and misshapen looking, so that helps. And I'm like, an ogre. Ogres are evil and fierce, but at the same time, unless they're really, really huge, which sometimes they are, they can be pretty cowardly. And I'm like, okay, how do I change his name to sound more fairy tale-ish? I'm like, well, Armstrong doesn't help, right? Armstrong is a cool last name. But I'm like, Lorne, his middle name is Lynn. I have to do something with that. And I'm like, the Lorne Lynn. So he became the evil ogre, Lorne Lynn. He would also live stream, but not listen to any Lorne phone calls because everyone does that in a community discussing Lorne adjacent media. Instead, he would just start a live stream and literally do nothing. Okay, so you guys may know I do not do calls. Uh, everybody else does that. Some of them do it very well and I enjoy them, but that's not my thing. That's not my thing. Uh, reading the chat log is usually not my thing. If I'm doing with it, Danny it is, but you guys want to discuss anything in particular? Do you guys want to hear me sing some more if you were a frequent watcher of joran comedy you would notice such iconic trademarks like his flirting also it's great to have a community where i can go in there and flirt with all the women because i love it it's me i'm a flirt i'm latin fake doxing people god bless you princess betty real name elizabeth durango oh, oh so <laughs> One of the calling cards, if you will, <laughs> trademarks of the series, is I fake dox everyone at the end, right? I give a name that sounds real or whatever, right? I call clobbering time, uh, Derek time or whatever I said. I called St. Betty Elizabeth. His big Latin Latino laugh. Thank you, thank you so much, OJ. Uh, that's become uh, my trademark. I refer to it as my loud Latin laugh because that's absolutely what it is. And most importantly, the over obsession with alphas and betas. Saturday night, I actually had a format. I was going to do Jorn After Dark and talk about the difference between alphas and betas. The ogre looked right at them, trying to scare them. But the cat and the koala were alpha males, <laughs> and they could not be scared easily by such an obvious beta cuck. I love being serenaded to. I always tell guys, guys, you know. All right, I'll give a little alpha male advice. Clobbering time, yes. All right, alpha male energy is just increased. Sir Clobber was strong, brave, and ready to fight. Children, he is what we call an alpha male. Absolutely. No woman. Unless you want me to do a spontaneous Jorn after dark. Because I was going to do Jorn after dark. Talks about the difference between alpha males and beta males. And how not to be like Lorn, the ultimate beta male. So that line that Clobber just does, where he talks to Tiffany goes, I don't know who you think you're talking to, I'm not Lorn. Where he suddenly becomes very alpha and it's awesome. I almost didn't go with Jorn. I almost went with alpha male Derek. Because Derek is my favorite character in... Lornography. I've been studying the whole thing about alpha males and beta males <clears throat> just in the past year. Of course, because Shin is an alpha male and Lorne is the biggest beta. Because when you're the alpha male, everyone wants to take you down, children. Some of Jordan's greatest hits were 
teaching children about the Church of Cod, where he would narrate a story about Warren and other community members in a fairy tale like setting going on fairy tale adventures. Once upon a time, in the faraway land of Aang, there lived a cat named Andy. Hello, everybody. Andy looked a little different than most other cats. I'm bald and actually good looking, haha. <laughs> hey, you're not the only handsome bald fellow around here, you know. We have the Lauren Armstrong celebrity comedy roast, where he roasts Lauren and screams at us about how he's better than a literal pedophile. Lauren, let me run down the list real quickly. Uh... I'm smarter than you, I'm better looking than you, I have bluer eyes than you, I'm funnier than you, I'm a better writer, singer, songwriter, guitarist, human being, uh, I speak better than you, uh, I'm not a virgin, and oh, there was one other thing, one, what is it? Oh, I'm not a fucking pedophile! And the Lauren to English translation which I honestly don't know what this is. I think it's supposed to be Jorn translating Lorne on what he's saying and actually thinking, but it doesn't make any sense and none of it is funny. If you're going to use logic, I will be forced to use a passive aggressive tone with you. <laughs> Yell at me, why don't you? <laughs> I'll be yelling at you later, ah! Guys, unfortunately, this one gets a little slow, a little boring in the middle. So you can make your own jokes and then have another sip of alcohol. Okay, here's a joke from the first one, which, by the way, you should go watch. Ready? Me, 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 me. Imagine being a comedian, a self proclaimed comedian having a set and telling your audience during that set that not only you ran out of jokes you are out of jokes in your set but then you tell them to make their own jokes and not only do you tell them that but then you replay a joke from a previous set like you have to literally be insane to think that this is a good idea. The content Joran would make had some potential. In fact, any idea Joran had could have done really well. But with how it was executed, these videos came off as slightly uncanny and not really that funny. People are generally nice though, so they're not just gonna come at Joran, they're just gonna let him be and ignore him. So right off the gate, a lot of people didn't really like the vibe Joran was giving off. But like I said, many people just ignored him and went along their way. Plus, you can't really call someone out for just being weird. But as time went on, Joran's behavior pushed far past the boundaries of just being weird. Starting with much smaller offenses, Joran would constantly soft dox people while he was live streaming which makes some people feel uncomfortable because he's only doing it because he wants to show how close he is to another content creator. Uh, I believe he's living in Spain now. Uh, every Are time- Are you living back in Spain? Because I knew he was living in London. Oh, okay. Um, good in you. And I have heard good in you and I probably said it. And someone who was actually great Basti's daughter, Cyber Squeak, she's just like, okay. He would also flirt with other female community members. What ladies are still around? Kelp Hill. Kelp Hill, bikini model, definitely. I have no doubt in my mind. Probably got long legs and all that, yeah. He would flirt a lot with other female community members, which would make others listening feel very uncomfortable. And someone in the chat, I don't know if it was Rodis Chu Tootsie, one of the girls who's my favorite to flirt with or whatever, because I'm the big flirt, Latino. But if you were to listen to Jorn speak about these women, it only sounded like he cared about the fact that they were women, not about anything else like the content they produced. Rhoda doesn't like mine either. Oh, I wonder if Rhoda has a cute accent. I wonder. I always get your mommy. Oh, you get a little girl voice, Rhoda. Interesting. <laughs> we are off to a pretty bad start here but a good stern talking to from his mother could easily fix the two problems I just mentioned. Joran didn't stop there though. His comments towards other women became more and more sexual 
until he thought it was a good idea to post this comment on a YouTube video. This video has long been since deleted, but just for context, a member of the same community Joran resides in uploaded a normal video of them going on about their daily routine, and Joran decided to make this comment providing a timestamp. This was now starting to become a much bigger problem. Innocent flirting was what Joran was trying to sell to you, but he was in fact engaging in very creepy and unwanted behavior, trying to make this community into a harem of girls that he can choose from. It's even more gross when you remember that this community that both talks about T-Cat Predators and Lauren is filled with many people who have been victims of sexual assault before. Many people find solace and some feel a bit of justice when we make fun of these low-life predators. So finding out that one is among us can be pretty jarring. Simply put, a lot of people have been crept on before, came to a community where we make fun of creeps, only to then see another creep doing creepy things, acting like he's not a creep and better than the other creeps we make fun of. But what if I told you that this isn't the worst thing Joran has done? I would say that this would be enough for him to be shunned from this or any community, but Joran got a bit too high off his clout and decided to do one more thing that would make him unredeemable in the eyes of many. Joran was known for his comedic sketches, as he would also bring other community members to help him act in it. One day, Joran made a sketch that I'll simply call Lauren's Three Wishes. In this sketch, Joran plays the narrator as he sets the scene and adds his commentary throughout the skit. We find Lauren, voiced by Clobbering Time, wandering an endless desert. While on his journey, he stumbles across a genie lamp and of course, out pops a genie. Voiced by Tiffany Lockhart, the genie then instructs Lauren that he has three wishes and that he can wish for almost anything. Lauren then wishes to have sex with the genie, but the genie refuses, saying that that's one of the two wishes that she can't grant. After more thinking, Lauren wishes to have women be attracted and obsessed with him, for him to be a country music star, and to have unlimited wishes. The genie grants the first two wishes, but rejects the last one because that is against the rules. In fact, since Lauren used his last wish to wish for unlimited wishes, he forfeited his right to have that last wish. Lauren gets mad and feels like he got scammed out of a wish, and this part I actually want you to hear for yourself. Tiffany's voice has been cut out and replaced for reasons you'll find out in a moment, but I want you to hear this part of the sketch. And that was the story about how Lauren Armstrong found... Excuse me, Mr. Narrator? Oh, oh, it's the genie, hello! Hi. I've been stuck in that lamp for over 1,000 years. It gets pretty lonely all by myself. Oh, I would imagine so. Nothing but the same four curved walls to look at and all. Yes. And I am tired of having to obey every dummy who finds my lamp. So I decided to choose my next master for myself. Someone who has a nice voice. You. Really? All my life I was told genies were hard to find. No one told me that they come up to you and drop their lamps in your lap. Anyway, you get three wishes. Unless of course, you rub me the right way, master. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know where and how to rub to get unlimited wishes. Unlike Lorne, I actually know female anatomy. Let's go back to my place, shall we? Your wish is my command. Oh, the end. Bye everybody, thanks for listening! Now, to the naked eye, this just seems like a regular sketch that isn't funny. In fact, I can break down Joran's HILARIOUS skit. Lauren is a loser, and a beta, and just wants to have sex. Joran is an alpha, and a flirt, and also just wants to have sex. The genie is very sexy, and only attracted to alphas. Lauren makes a wish to have sex with the genie, showing the genie that he is a beta. Lauren then wishes that women obsess over him and that he was a famous country music star. The genie grants the wish, but it's obviously a monkey's paw type of situation and the hilarious joke is that Lauren will get the things that he wished for in unintended ways. The catfish are technically girls who obsess over him and because of his appearance on To Catch a Predator, his music videos have tons of views, making him somewhat famous. Then Lauren messes up the last wish cause he's stupid. Then the genie ditches the beta and goes for the alpha Joran. This terrible skit seems innocent enough, so what's so wrong with it? Well, I left out one thing that Joran is very passionate about, and that is his love for genies. 
Jordan in the past has shown his immense love for the female genie archetype. He's very attracted to the idea of owning a genie, having said genie be his master, the outfits the genie would wear, etc. This fetish for genies would be expressed in other places outside of the TCAP community, like on DeviantArt in comments, Facebook, or on Instagram. His obsession with genies was so bad that Joran would go through Instagram and like the photos of anyone in a genie outfit, including children, to masturbate to later. Of course, there's nothing wrong with having a fetish or a kink, but if it's to the point where anyone, even children, could put on a genie costume and you'll find them attractive, then you have a huge problem on your hands. Now that you know about this fact about Joran, let's go back and rewatch that sketch. Let's also hear how Joran characterized the genie. The genie stretched and yawned. She was so beautiful, with long ebony hair pulled back into a high ponytail. She had olive skin and almond-shaped eyes the same color as her hair. She wore sheer white pantaloons and a bejeweled top that revealed her flat tanned belly. She had gold curly-toed slippers that matched her large hoop earrings. Lauren looked at her and felt Mr. Penis standing at attention for the first time in a long time. Lord was so excited. He thought about how he could get his life back together. He thought about how he could make his childhood dreams come true. He thought about how big his new genie's breasts were. The genie crossed her arms, suddenly wishing she had worn a top that was a little less low cut. Ugh! What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Look, I'm no prude here. You meet someone magical and you want to try to have sex with them, have at it. I'm back. I just need a bathroom break. Did I miss anything? Oh, oh, there was another puff of smoke, and Lauren drooled over the way the genie moved her hips. Lauren balled up his hands into fists and lunged forward, ready to punch the genie because he's a fucktard little bitch who would hit a woman, and he's not a man at all, and if I ever meet him in person, I swear to God, he regret it for the rest of his pathetic life because... Uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Uh -huh. And that was the story about how Lorne Armstrong found... Excuse me, Mr. Narrator? Oh, oh, it's the genie, hello. Hi. I've been stuck in that lamp for over 1,000 years. It gets pretty lonely all by myself. Oh, I would imagine so. Nothing but the same four curved walls to look at and all. Yes. And I am tired of having to obey every dummy who finds my lamp. So I decided to choose my next master for myself. Someone who has a nice voice. You. Really? All my life I was told genies were hard to find. No one told me that they come up to you and drop their lamps in your lap. Anyway, you get three wishes. Unless of course, you rub me the right way master. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know where and how to rub to get unlimited wishes. Unlike Lorne, I actually know female anatomy. Let's go back to my place, shall we? Your wish is my command. Oh, the end. Bye everybody, thanks for listening. Now it all hits a little differently, doesn't it? If we factor in the fact that Jordan found Tiffany's voice sexy in the past, then a clear picture can be painted. Jordan got Tiffany to act in a sketch without her knowing about Jorn's genie fetish, removing the ability for her to consent in making something that turned Jorn on. That isn't okay. That is very predatory, and if there's one thing you need to know about this community, it's that we don't take too kindly to predators. Nobody's toys are safe anymore. Bunky's here. Alright, so let's set the scene a little bit. It's sometime in late May 2020, and Jordan is still in the community making all of his mediocre content. Pretty much everyone was uncomfortable with Jordan's constant flirting, but only a few people knew what he was truly up to. Nobody at this point knew about the little girls on Instagram though. Popular e-celebrity Wes Most was one of the people in the know about Jordan's behavior. So he decided what best thing to do but to chat with Jordan a bit, play in his world and see what he could find out. And boy did we find out a lot. Like how much Joran believed he was just a big flirt, oblivious to everyone else's feelings. Or how he believed that bigger streamers in the community, like Clobbering Time, get tons of women throwing themselves at him, and how Joran wishes that to be the case for him. 
Jordan believed that the TCAP slash pornography community was his fast pass to a buffet of women. So with the help of West, he set up a Twitter account on June 3rd, 2020, ready for all the breaches to start rolling in. A few more important things I should mention from this chat are when Jordan thought it was a good idea to use PayPal information to figure out West's name. What Wes is referring to, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but Jorn had apparently been going through the names of those who had donated to him in his stream, which your PayPal information will show your real name unless you have it listed under a business account. So what Jorn had been doing was essentially trying to find people's real names and information about them. Freaking See, and this is what upset me about uh, Streamlabs is that it doesn't tell you that when you make a donation via PayPal or whatever, that it goes directly to them uh, and they see that information because I've had a business account for years and I just wasn't commingling funds. So I didn't want to make donations from that account. And this was when I found out that every donation made. Uh, if you're using a, a non-business account, like you're giving that person your information. And it was only because of uh, Joran. Most people wouldn't give a shit about that. They don't want to know whose people's names are. They don't care. But Joran had to go through and had to ask me who the name was on on my donation, despite knowing that I had been, you know, doxxed and several other things. And he was, I am so curious. Like, why would he be curious? We We weren't partners in any way. We weren't friends. Like, why would it matter to him whose name was on this account? And the fact that Jorn was being trolled. Yes, some nefarious evildoer thought it would be funny to troll Jorn. They would send very critical and unflattering messages to Jorn through his chat and donations while he was streaming. Not only that, but they would troll Jorn and other people's streams as well. Many suspects for who could be behind this were thought up. And by many, I mean two. At first, Jorn thought that the Cornville Mafia, a group led by Lorne, was trolling him. After speaking to Wes and then thinking about it a bit more, he came to the conclusion that it must be Vincent Nicotra that is trolling him. Was the same man that messed with Wes also messing with Jorn, forever creating a bromance bond between the two of them? Hopefully we find out the answer to that question. Anyway, we find ourselves nearing the start of the 4th of July weekend and Jorn is feeling very confident about himself. So confident that he decides to start a challenge with Wes. Whoever can tag the hottest girl wins. And would you look at that? Jordan just got a message from a community member by the name of Mac and Cheese. Now we have two chats going on at the same time. The one with Mac and Cheese and the one with Wes Most. With Mac and Cheese, Jordan is trying to get with her. And with Wes Most, Jordan comes to update him as well as ask for his advice. I don't want to spend the entire time breaking down these conversations. But just like before, we can glean some interesting information from the both of them. First, with Mac and Cheese, Joran displayed some very strange behavior, like asking Mac and Cheese if they found any of the predators physically attractive. You know, the predators from that one show where everyone wanted to have sex with a child? He used a Lauren quote to flirt with her at some point. You can see his love for genies at full effect in these messages too. And of course, we have the infamous O-Face and his ruined coupons. Very strange, but otherwise they just spent the whole time sexting each other. In the Westmost chat log, Jorn constantly asks for Wes's opinion and he gladly gives it. He's perfectly fine with sharing other people's nudes and talking about Wes's BBC. I have also, oh boy, confirmation that Wes has a BBC. Laffy Oh boy, confirmation that Wes has a big black cock typed out at 10 26 p.m by a 48 year old man uh omega e e bear west what was your reaction when you read that bbc message from joran i was uh, like i was stunned and i went back and showed you know like the the people who are part of this this little group um look what the fuck this guy just said to me and we were all like we were all shocked. You know, I had to assure them that this was a real message from a real person that sent that to me. Uh, I didn't even know what to say. But, I mean, it, after all the weird shit he had said leading up to that, I mean, it, it was surprising, but, like, also not that surprising. Because you, you, you didn't know what weird shit. We knew that we were in for some weird shit, but we didn't know how weird it was going to get. 
Otherwise, the chat is just Joran flexing that he's such a flirt and a ladies man, and how there were so many hot women in the TCAP community. He was in the lead in their 4th of July competition, as he was now talking to two women, and Wes wasn't talking to anyone. Hopefully nothing goes wrong and Wes can pull forward in this competition. So this was all fun and games, but if you want a full reading and analysis of both the mac and cheese and the West Most chat log, then it's linked in the description. Done by the beta cuck Matthew Mahogany and an adult girl, they produce excellent content about Joran on the Alpha Male Derek channel, so you don't want to miss out. Joran, in a lot of ways, is a more advanced Lorne. He's a Lorne that got college education. Yeah, and in, and in some other ways... Lorne is more advanced because he has this, he does have charisma, you can't deny that. We, we wouldn't listen to the Lorne calls if, if there wasn't something funny about him crying and screaming and things that he says. Yeah. And that's charisma. So, Joran, I don't know if it would be as entertaining. He just sighs a whole lot. But now, it's time for Joran to be called out for the inappropriate behavior he's done. First, we start with Mac and Cheese, who sent this final message to Joran, basically saying that there are lots of women in this community who have been through some type of sexual abuse in the past, and they come here to feel good and have fun, not have some creep prey upon them and flirt with them. As she said in her message, Mac and Cheese then attempted to warn people about Joran's behavior. Around July 3rd, she started posting comments on videos and live streams warning people about a predator in the community. Next, she created and posted a video calling out Joran, but this video was taken down very quickly. So quickly that no one got a chance to see it in full. Then Joran went into full defense mode. He hand washed the message Mac and Cheese sent to him by saying that she was a troll. Not just any troll, but the one that has been messing with him for months. When confronted about it, Joran would parrot that same message, saying that this was the work of a catfish and a troll trying to take him down a peg. He sent the final mac and cheese message to Wes Most and gave him a call, asking for his advice because at this point, Joran was freaking out. <sighs> it's over for me, Wes, isn't it? I mean, I mean, how to define over. I don't know. I mean, this person, people, God, I hope it's not Google Appeal, this person is just going to put on. Fucking vendetta. Unlimited time. Uh keeps popping up. New account, new account. YouTube doesn't block fucking IPs, but blocking a million accounts does nothing. Two seconds later, Vince or whoever the fuck comes back with another stupid one. Uh, now they found me on now they're coming after me on Twitter. What next? Discord? Where will I go? What can I even do? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at what at, at what she <sighs> wrote and I, I need to, I need to like tell I've you something. The... There are a lot of women in the TCAP community that are broken and have suffered sexual assault in their past. I know that's true. This isn't the community I've heard those problem. words from somewhere at some time. I don't remember who or when or what the circumstance was. But yeah, go ahead. This isn't the community to prey upon women and flirt with them. I mean, so when you when you see what she wrote, do you think that maybe any of that's true? Um. To be one hundred percent honest, yeah. To be one hundred percent honest, West man to man, I don't pray on. Anything. Not praying. Do you think maybe some people are seeing the flirting as too much? And and in your mind, is this person really upset about what you're doing, or is this just a, an excuse? I would say this. So <laughs> I will credit myself with being very good at noticing people's reactions. I do mm. flirt a lot with all the women. Um, if someone is not into it, I stop. I notice carefully their reaction. Joran had everyone believe that he was being messed with and trolled for no reason, that he was fully innocent, and maybe his excuses would have worked, but Mac and Cheese wasn't done yet. She started sending emails to community members warning them about Joran. When confronted about the email, Joran once again hand-waved it, saying that this troll was grasping at straws. 
The video she made was being uploaded to other video sharing websites so it could be watched in full. And finally, on June 5th, 2020, she released a Google Drive compiling everything that Joran has done over the years. It contained the posts of the little kids in genie costumes that Joran liked. It showed Joran's pathetic chat log with mac and cheese in full. And it showed off Joran's small dick. Once this drive came out, Joran was fully done. Just to be clear, everyone thought that Joran was a weird guy, but nobody knew about the little girls in genie costumes until the dump came out, and that's not gonna go over well in a community that makes fun of child predators. Joran was fully outed now. He had nothing left to say and he had nowhere else to go. So he did what he'd been doing for the past three months. He ran back to daddy. Hey, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to understand the, the need for the call. I, I thought I made myself pretty clear with everything. Well, I, I suck at typing. So I decided I would rather call you so I can let you know uh, where my head's at and how things have progressed. Well, I, I just want to start off by saying when you and I talked on Friday, you made it sound like this was this was all bullshit and it was nothing and, and you know I'm supporting you and I've supported you from the beginning here and then when I when I see this stuff come out this isn't a troll you know Vince called me a troll when when I was exposing him for his bullshit he called me a troll told everyone beforehand hey you're gonna hear from this troll don't believe anything he says and, and that's what you did but you had to have known that some of that what was being talked about was accurate that wasn't bullshit. Uh, I didn't well, you at all. Then you need to. You need to. Because, you know, that's the same shit that Vince would say. I haven't watched the video. Someone put their time and effort into making a video to show some shit that you've done. And then when they're showing receipts, showing... That's a little fucking girl that, that you're, you're liking these comments with the, with, the, with the genie fetish. That's not okay. So for some reason, Jordan believed that he was some beloved YouTube star that he had fans and that he had to address these allegations so he can go back to making his content. Any normal person would probably just delete their channel and run away, but not Joran. He wanted to explain himself and have everyone forgive him so he can just go back to making his mediocre content. Wes was messing with him while they were talking for the past few months, but once he saw the Google Drive and the pictures of the little girls, he wanted nothing to do with Joran. Joran, of course, wanted to explain himself and his mindset, so he gave Wes a call. Not only did Joran want a call, but he wanted Wes to help him with an apology video. So what's your plan? Not what you thought about doing and now you're doing. I want to know, like, what's your honest, clear plan? Apology video. And I would like very much your opinion, specific things I should mention in cop to. That Wow. So you want me to co-write your apology video or somehow co-write no, it? No, no. Jorn, what do you think you need to what, apologize please. for? Jorn, what do you think? Because you know more than I do. You know shit you've done that maybe hasn't been uncovered yet. What do you need to apologize for? Wes, Who do you need Wes. to apologize to? Wes, please. This, this is humiliating. These next set of calls are referred to as the apology calls for that reason. As Wes helps Jordan try to construct an apology that's not god-awful and good enough for him to not be shunned by this community. The first apology call was made on July 5th of 2020 and it's just Wes scolding Jordan and then agreeing to helping him make the apology. Ignorance of what you did is not an excuse. I agree. You're a grown man. Yeah. Behave like it. I will. If you want me to look over your um, apology video script when you write it, I'll look it over. That would mean so much to me. That would be, that's more than I deserve. That's the, uh, that's the best I can offer you right now. Dude, that's, that's, that's being incredible. That's being, yeah, that's really doing me a solid. The second call took place hours later, and in this one, Wes helps Joran with the apology like he said he would. But there was one more thing Joran was hiding from us, and Wes decided to confront him on it. You know that skit he made with Lauren and the genie and Tiffany? You know that skit that's getting him in trouble right now? Well, when things started hitting the fan, despite telling everyone else that he deleted the video, he put it on private. Is the video privated or, or deleted, Joran? I deleted it. If you if you give me one second, I'll check. 
when I go to the video, it says this video is private. Okay, let me see. Hold on. So I'd have to say that that, that kind of lacks sincerity if, if, if that's the right, case. Right, right. No. Uh, the stuff that I have privated but not deleted yet has been the Keltel stuff. Jordan, I'm yes. looking at a... I have a channel too. I know the difference right. between a private video and a deleted video. I'm looking at a screen that says video unavailable. This video is private. That's not what a deleted video would say. But it's deleted. Uh, I could send you a screenshot right now of all my content, the back end, everything. I want to do my absolute best to let you know that I'm sincere and that all your time that you've given me has not been a waste. Yes, of course, I want to save my skin. I'm not going to lie, but you're, you've been going above and beyond much more than I deserve. Yeah, send me, send me that screenshot. Um, and then, I, I, you know, you should, you might as well keep working on your... Uh, on your script. I'm, I'm going to look into some things on the back end here. I'm getting okay. stuff coming in, so I'm, I'm going to check this stuff out, and then uh, let me know when you're done. Okay, yeah. All right. Hours later, Jordan and Wes talk once again to work on the apology, discuss the private video, and then try to get a timeline of what was going on in Jordan's head. The yeah. timeline yesterday when you woke up, because so we, we yeah. spoke... We, you know, we had spoken even on, um, on 4th of July when I was kind of messing you're like oh this person's grasping at straws they got nothing i'm going to bed you want to you want to talk about it call me you, that was kind of your attitude yeah. it was pretty cavalier like i, I don't really want to entertain yeah. this anymore this is bullshit yeah. if you want to talk about it give me a call but i'm not going to sit here on the phone with you going back and forth and uh, I'm, maybe to you it made you it made it sound like uh you've been vindicated but but to me that kind of made me think there was something more and, and that's when i looked at the video from what you were calling a troll because yeah. your attitude you had no interest in watching the video if someone made a, a, a video about me do it saying what i called lies better fucking believe i would watch it because my intention would be to make a response to it and your lack of desire to watch it told me that there was something i needed to go and look at you yeah. didn't want to address I ran it, from it like you, a coward yeah i ran from it like a coward straight up and, you know, when all of your content is about making fun of cowards and how Lauren is a coward, when faced yeah. with the exact same thing, you did the same thing. Yeah. And that's got to be pretty eye-opening to you. After spending the rest of the day working on the apology, Joran released it on the night of July 6, 2020. It wasn't the best. I do the same thing on DeviantArt. Sexualizing left and right. So many times I can't even count. For years. What's even worse than that? I've hit the like button on pics of little girls, children wearing the same types of outfits that turn me on the most. The person who was alerting people to my predatory behavior first in a video and then through emails was not a troll, but someone trying to blow the whistle on me, which was the right thing to do, and it should be applauded. Sorry, sip of water. But it's probably better than whatever he would have came up with on his own. The next day, Wes and Joran speak to each other yet again. They talk about his apology and how Joran feels about it, and then Wes helps Joran prepare for his interview. Oh, you, you thought this was over? Oh, no, let's take a more macro view of this. So you have Joran, this guy, who came into a community that revolved around making fun of and trolling predators. Then he thought it was a good idea to be a predator himself, as he commented this on another community member's video. Got someone to unwillingly act in a sketch that evolved his fetish, got someone else to draw art for the sketch which I didn't even mention before, and liked the photos of little girls that are dressed in his fetish. Then when confronted, he says that the person calling him out is a troll. Then when exposed, he changes his tune and figures out why everyone has a problem with him. He calls Wes and begs him to help him with an apology, admits to doing everything mentioned above, as well as admitting that he spoke to high schoolers before. There Have there ever been any private conversations with these high school age girls? Or has there ever been back and forth on the in those comments? Or has it mostly been you making a singular comment and not getting a response? Uh, it's mostly been singular comments. Has there ever been any kind of, um, you know, private conversation with someone who was underage? Uh, in my 20s, yes. 
Was that a, a frequent thing? Did you feel it was wrong at the time or was it more so, you know, I feel like we're close in age and maturity level or do you want to elaborate on that at all? I definitely felt like we were close uh, maturity wise. And after all of that, comedian, songwriter, 150 subscriber Jorn Comedy thought that he needed to do an interview. I couldn't come up with a funnier joke even if I tried. And the best part to this, the punchline to the joke, is that it didn't even work. The interview went pretty poorly. And had you, prior to asking her to do this, had you expressed to people, anyone, that you found her voice very sexy? No. You had not expressed that to anyone? Correct. Have you expressed that since she did the genie role? Well, this is the first real uncomfortable question. Um, um, I've never found Tiffany's voice as attractive as other members of the community have. So if there was a screenshot of you telling mm -hmm. someone that you found her voice extremely sexy, would you be surprised by that? Yes. Because I'll be honest with you, I've seen it. Okay. I'm not trying to blindside you with anything, but I've seen you, you telling someone that you find her voice very sexy. Thank you. Then one last phone call was had between Wes and Jorn as they discussed the interview where he rates his skills, the skills of many syllables, the person who conducted the interview, and talks about the content he is going to make once everything blows over. How, how would you, if you had to rate her, you know, one to ten, what would you, what would you give her? Her skills? Yeah, you know, as far as the interview, what would you give her, her skills? Oh, I'll, I'll say an eight or nine. Probably a nine would be more accurate. She was very good. What would have made her attempt? Ooh, uh, probably rather minute stuff. Like she lost her place a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, once I asked her to repeat a question. Well, how would you rate yourself during the interview? Uh, at least an eight. Okay, so I'll ask um, you, I'll yeah, ask you I would, what, what would have made you attempt? Uh, I'm probably the only thing is, uh, more preparation as far as because i really did not think a lot about a variety of questions so that i could have in my mind i realized there were some things semi-philosophical you know i happened maybe three times but where i'm like wow i haven't considered this specific thing like the molly thing at all that's a damn good question well, you know what? Um, I will tell you something moderately funny. Um, I had ideas for sketches and a couple of them where I called you. I was going to do one sketch where I ran out of ideas and I called various members of the community who were bigger than me and do stuff. And I was going to do one where I call you and you are such an over-the-top goody two-shoes that you're like, oh, I have time before I go to the soup kitchen. How can I help you? Blah, blah, blah. That's me. Yeah. And, uh, totally me. <laughs> That's me to perfection. Things, of course, didn't just blow over. The apology and the interview made waves throughout the community, and everyone unanimously hated Jorn and wanted him gone. A mirror channel popped up and started to archive some of Jorn's content and upload those apology calls with Jorn and Wes. At some point, Jorn got the message and deleted his channel. He had a second channel, Stefan Sings, that he kept separate from his other channel, but this one would also be deleted once people found out that this channel existed. He tried to keep his fame. He thought that everybody loved him and that he could just apologize and everything would be okay. But his apology rang hollow and nobody was on his side. That was the end of Joran Comedy. And that's a real shame, cause we didn't even figure out who was trolling him for months on his live streams. I was already going nuts from trolls and how much it's been fucking impersonating me and doing stuff. All right. Okay, so this was really funny to me because I did enjoy the fact that while I was the one trolling Jorn, that I would also be on Skype talking to him and telling him not to let the troll win. There were many times he wanted to kill streams. And I'll say, Jorn, if you kill the stream, you're going to let Nikotra win. Is that what you want? Do you want a world where Vince Nikotra could chase you off the internet? Because that's not a world I want to live in. Uh, and and so I would make him continue the stream and then I'd have like 50 more names ready to keep going in and and he would just be angry deleting and it was great and and
It's hard to say when Jordan Comedy died, when the Google Drive was published, when he released his apology, when he conducted that interview. All good answers, but whatever the answer is, it was clear that Jordan was no longer a name he could go by. Jordan and Comedy were synonymous, so Comedy was also dead for him. Especially when a member of his comedy troupe, Funny Please, heavily criticized Jordan for his actions and disbanded the troupe just to disassociate from him. I, I, I'm ashamed. I thought of you as a brother, as a partner, and you had me conned. And, and to make it even worse, is you used accomplishments that we had to, 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 to on these people. Things that I provided for you, you used as ammunition on these people, you piece of shit. Stefan, on the other hand, wasn't done creating content, specifically music. Despite saying that he was going to get some help for his issues, Stefan was back on YouTube in three weeks under the channel name Steer Music. Around May of 2021, Stefan would use his account to start chatting with four women at the same time. All of these women were of course catfishes as the community he left in shame had found his new channel. They each had their little quirks and some funny moments were had, like watching Jordan react to a genie appearing at his job. This is great. Seeing how the death of DMX affected him so much. I was a huge DMX fan. My favorite rapper. I cried when he died. It was hard for me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's my question. <laughs> I mean, what, I'm sure it's sad, but Jesus. You remember what Jordan told Sheila was that basically their lives were, he mirrored his life, including oh, yeah. a, a battle with alcohol. And watching him change his story when he deleted his Steer music channel. I'm not doing too well today, hon. All right, so this was May 22nd. Uh, this was the day that Jorn's channel was, Jorn's Steer music channel was first shared with everyone uh, within the community. This is when the, the video went out telling people about Steer music. And all of a sudden, this you know secret that he had been holding for 10 months uh, was was now revealed. So he was not doing too well uh, on on that night. Aw, what's wrong, honey? Sad eye face heart. I found out that a friend of mine died, cry face. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Many cry face emojis. Is there anything I can do to make you feel better? Heart. No, I'm sorry. It was COVID. Joran took Steer Music down for the first time uh, when he said he was going to bed and everything that made him sad. He took down the channel and it was no more. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night, Mr. Heart, heart, cry emoji. Um, I'm really sorry to bother you, but when I went to pick another song on your channel, it all of a sudden says, no videos. Surprise face, cry face, cry face, cry face. Did YouTube take you down? Cry face, cry face, heart. I took it down. I am so depressed. I don't even want to look at it right now. How long were you guys friends? It sounds like you were very close with him, Hart. Not that close. Honestly, eight years. His daughter is closer to my age. Thank you again for being so supportive and sweet to me last night, Hugface. Meant a lot to me. So here he sang that it was a, it was it was a friend's dad. You know, he said, not that close, honestly, eight years. His daughter is closer to my age. So, you know, a couple questions how this was such a traumatic experience that caused him to, you know, supposedly close down his channel, take everything down. Because, and then 
when asked again later, he wasn't even that close with the dad. He's actually closer with the daughter. Uh, the funny thing is that in a separate catfish a month later, he claimed it was a friend's mom who died, which sent him into a spiral coupled with the death of DMX. Although Stefan believed that drawing comedy was dead, he in fact would rise once again as the community who trolls and mocks predators do what they were best at. Nowadays, you'll find mirror channels of both drawing comedy and steer music, both of which have more subscribers than the original, both archiving any new Jorn content they can find. People have dedicated channels discussing Jorn, and many have live-streamed and analyzed Jorn's previous content. Just like Lorne, he even has his own holiday, the 4th of Jorlai. Some people were opposed to making Jorn a locale, as he was just some cringy guy who did something stupid. But then the prophet, Mac and Cheese, asked the most important question that sacred day, one that would shake Jornography forever. Why not? In a community built on making fun of predators, to the point where they catfish and troll them, why not do the same to Jorn? He was an ogre in sheep's clothing, and as Jorn would say, Ogres can't cook food. The only thing ogres cook is little girls. That's the end of today's story, children. The story of a community righteously banding together and clowning on the ogre known as Jorn. Real name, John Curry Mode. As they say in the land of the ogres, <laughs> Bye, sweethearts. Like, comment, subscribe, share, ring the bell.